There was in Thinkelin a house called Thinkelin House, which was a lovely mansion house with a long, long drive, and alongside it were acres and acres of orchard, grapes and uh, on the vine and tomatoes growing. Everything was growing in that place. There were two ways to get in there. We, we used to go up the side and through a hedge where we'd burrowed a little hole through to go and get some apples or we'd go into the field behind and drop down from the field then into into the orchard but we'd have a good time we'd scrounge as many apples as we could and of course sometimes we'd end up with a bad tummy the next day but it was certainly a very very prestigious place to go a very nice place to go but no longer exists because it became uh, yeah, orchard drive and a, yeah. and a housing estate. My brothers used to climb over the fence and pinch the apples and we'd have loads and loads of apples that they'd bring home. My mother never knew where they got them from, not for a long time. <laughs> she thought they were given to them uh, until she found them climbing over the fence one day <laughs> and they got caught by the local bobby. One was called Skim. And if you did anything wrong, you'd be called to his house and you'd go into his front room, which was an office with a big desk, and he'd put his helmet on and then he'd, he'd give you a row there and then. And he'd drag you home to your parents by grabbing hold of you and dragging you up the street. He did it to my brothers a couple of times and I think he did it to John and his best friend Harold as well, I think. <laughs> they were caught a couple of times doing different things. And I guess most of the children within Flinkellin were were afraid of him because he seemed to have this power, power over people.